Welcome back. I'm William Seckler, President and CEO of the Community House in Birmingham, and you're joining us at Making a Difference at the Community House. Within each show, we recognize individuals, corporations, foundations, nonprofits, and cultural mavericks in our area and throughout the region that are making a difference both at the community house and at the region at large. Today, again, I'm joined by a second cultural maverick that is part of our cultural talk series. I'm very, very excited to um, introduce Steve McBride. Steve, your executive director of Powabic Pottery. Is that, that correct? That's correct. I got that right? You got it right. Well, welcome to the show and thank you so much for being here today. Well, thanks for um, inviting me. I, I know that you're part of our cultural talk series and folks, you've been probably following us the last couple years. We bring in our cultural mavericks, if you will, that uh, are speaking and talking about the great institutions, foundations, and nonprofits in the area. And in particular, you're going to be speaking on uh, Wednesday, looks like June 20th, Mm -hmm. at 6.30 at the Community House, and we're very, very excited to have you at the Community House, Steve, and sharing all the great work and great things and history and, and the future of Poabic Pottery. So I'm gonna jump right into it, if you don't mind, uh, because uh, we got a lot, I'm sure, to talk about. Um, you're an historical organization that's been around since 1903, mm -hmm. so you beat us by about 20 years at the Community House, and uh, your uh, unique pottery uh, at the studio has contributed to the arts and craft movement of this country and the nation uh, beginning in the 20th century. It's just outstanding. Um, and uh, your historical significance, you do an awful lot with charitable contributions to this region. Um, it's, you really are a national historic landmark. There are so many great things and adjectives mm -hmm. to talk about at your great organization. For me personally, what's most important is that you're a 501c3, and I know how hard and sometimes the difficult challenges are in operating a nonprofit charitable organization and yet doing the great work that you are doing. Um, can you tell me and tell our audience a little bit about the mission of Powabic Pottery? Sure. Uh, well, our mission is pretty simple. It's to enrich the human spirit through clay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's something that, that Powabic has been doing now for 115 years. And, you know, I, I think people don't always appreciate, you know, the, the true kind of like uniqueness of having, you know, this type of organization right downtown. Um, right. You know, we'd like to say that we're part of the fabric of the city. Mm -hmm. We've been making, you can see Powabic all over, you know, from well, you know, out here you can see it in Cranbrook. Yes. Um, we're kind of throughout the campus, uh, you know, in, in Kingswood and Cranbrook House and Thornley and the Rainbow Fountain and Christchurch Cranbrook is, is filled with Pawabic, is, you know, Pawabic tile. When you go downtown, you'll see us in the Guardian Building and the DIA and, you know, the public library. And, and that's continued now for, you know, 115 years. I mean, we've been, you know, making and enriching the city through these, you know, beautiful art installations. Um, in the 80s, we did the, you know, Art in the Station, five of the People Mover stations. And in 2000, we did Comerica Park. And, you know, just last year, we, we had, you know, spectacular year. We did um, all the Q Line stations. And, My goodness. Um, we had a mural in Little Caesars Arena. We brought some pictures of some the other mural projects that we did, but it's, you know, we've been doing it in what now, you know, is a National Historic Landmark facility that was, you know, our current building was built in 1907 to no be a pottery. Way. Wow. Um, we're, we're still using the clay mixer that was installed in 1912. Oh my gosh, no kidding. And, you know, to be, not just have this rich history and have the impact that we've had kind of throughout the region, but, you know, to still be doing it in that same place. Absolutely. And that's so inspiring, you know, we, I think you mentioned that you, you came as a, a tour when you were in school, and we hear that all the time of people that come through, and, you know, it's inspiring to see how this work is made. And Absolutely. then you go around and you kind of see it in the region, and you know, you realize that there's, there aren't, well, there really are no potteries left from that era that are still doing it. And we've been doing it now, you know, continuously for over a century. It, it's amazing. And you have a retail component as, as well as you offer a whole array of other opportunities, educational, mm -hmm. um, enrichment, what have you. Can you talk a little bit about if somebody came down to the studio, what they could expect? Yeah, and we're open, you know, seven days a week, free and open to the public. So you come down and we've got, you know, our Poavik store where you can, you know, buy pottery and tile, not just from Poavik. So we've got, you know, a lot of the work that we make right there on site. We make the clay, we make the glaze, we fire everything right there in our building. Um, and then we also carry work by 80 different artists from all over North America. Oh, okay. So you'll see a lot of different, you know, spectacular ceramic artwork. We've got an exhibition gallery and kind of a museum that shows a little bit of history. But you can also walk 
back through the pottery, you know, it's a National Historic Landmark, you'll see our artists at work. So you'll be able to talk and interact with, you know, our, our kiln guys as they're loading the kilns, our tile pressers as they're pressing tile, and our glaze artists. And, and you know, it's, it's just kind of neat to be able to experience that. A absolutely. And I want to do this a couple times on this show so that folks don't miss it. Can you tell me how they get a hold of your website? Um, can you give a little shout out before we go on? That's right, yeah. It's um, just www.pawabic.org, and Pawabic is P-E-W-A-B-I-C, okay. um, but it's pronounced Pawabic. Okay. Uh, it's an Ojibwe term. And uh, we're right, you know, located downtown on Jefferson Avenue, just about a mile and a half east of the Belle Isle Bridge. Well, there is so much to do in Detroit, as all of our viewers know now. It's such an exciting time. What I'm fascinated by, uh, really, Steve, is the fact that um, we had earlier on our show, uh, Dan from the Eastern Marca Corporation, having you on the show as well. You guys are institutions, I think cultural institutions, that have um, really uh, tested the time. And you have been there through the good, the bad, the growth, um, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, changes to, to adapt to modern today. And I think it's fascinating that you've been able to keep that um, uh, legacy going, uh, especially given the fact that times have changed over and over again, really. And uh, I know that, uh, I think, have you been there since 2015? Yeah. Can, can you tell me how you arrived there, where you came from beforehand, and what uh, you drew you to the, uh, this particular organization? Sure. So I'll give you a little kind of background where, where I came from. So I, I started, you know, I've always been, like, interested in art. As a kid, I was, like, good drawing and painting, but and I actually started college as a, a studio art major uh, a long time ago. Um, but ended up like you know changing majors every semester and uh, I think I ended up with them um, I dual degrees in philosophy and psychology and I was actually working on a doctorate in psychology or, or doctorate in psychology when I decided that wasn't the direction I wanted to go and started going taking classes again my wife bought me a class at a local pottery studio in no, Chicago right. so I was living in Chicago I just I loved you know pottery it was just it, it kind of appealed to me in a lot of different ways and so I ended up like you know started teaching, started working in local art center, and became a full-time studio potter in Chicago. And what really kind of sealed the deal for me, though, is like my very first art fair after I'd been like working as a full-time studio potter was the Halstead Street Art Fair in Chicago. Halstead Street is, is Boys Town, so it's a, it's a okay. gay community, and this is the late 80s. And my first art fair, all of a sudden I had a line out my booth, and young, you know, 20-something guys, and they were buying these, you know, covered pots that I was making. And I started listening, and they were buying their funeral urns. No so this was way. this was you know like 30 years ago. So it's the height of the the AIDS epidemic, and here you know wow. I was a 20 something guy. There were a bunch of 20 something guys at my booth, buying my art to like memorialize themselves after they're they're facing like what at the time felt like you know immediate death sentence. Oh my goodness! And so I'm thinking this is powerful stuff. Very. You know this it really kind of gave me a frame of reference for what art means to people. Right. And. So, like, fast forwarding, then um, we moved to Maine. I was going to set up a studio, but we had a kid, and I, I needed to like, get a real job with, <laughs> with insurance and things. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I ended up like going into nonprofit management. And so, for the last you know 25 years, I've been you know managing nonprofits. Why did you and, ever do that? No, <laughs> from one nonprofit to another. <laughs> from yeah, exactly. From an artist to a nonprofit, and, <laughs> no. and so then I started like you know working for arts organizations and. Uh, you know, eventually I, I moved back to Michigan. Um, I was born in Detroit, moved away when I was five, and moved back um, in 2004 to work at Interlochen Center for the Arts, and I was there oh, no for kidding. about 11 years. And then, you know, I had the opportunity when this job came available. It was like all of a sudden, not only to combine, you know, kind of the experience I'd gained in nonprofit management, but to do it for a pottery and the coolest pottery in the country. And You're I think that right. was just. You know, it kind of brought my whole career full circle, and it gave me like a chance to come down and, and do something that I'm ch I'm passionate about in a in a pottery that's having a bigger impact on the city than I think any other pottery in the country. Oh, I I, I definitely agree, and I'll tell you what, it is our good fortune that you came back because you're doing great work, and uh, to have somebody that has that um, love and passion and interest, and then willing to take on a nonprofit job because, as we all know, nonprofits work very very hard, and uh, it's the linchpin 
kingpin, really, I think, of our communities, but to make sure that uh, uh, you cover your expenses and make sure that uh, you are able to do and give programming and education and still be able to pay the bills is a pretty extraordinary feat. So um, in some ways, uh, uh, it, it's double duty, not only the passion mm -hmm. and love of the art itself, but also in the nonprofit world. And I, I really, my, I tip my hat off to you. I know that you're doing some great work right now. I understand that you may be putting on a new addition to, yep. to your facilities. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so, you know, Pulavik is thriving. Um, you know, we've been around for 115 years, but last year was like probably our, our biggest year ever. And oh. We had a lot of, you know, really spectacular projects all around the region. And, you know, we've been really challenged by lack of space. Mm. So, last few years, we've added a couple of production kilns, so we have room to fire work, but not the room to actually make it and process it and move tiles through. So, we uh, decided it was time to like add on. So, we had a, a empty lot in the back corner of our building and we added a 2,500 square foot addition which should Fantastic. be complete this summer. So it's, oh uh, we broke gosh. ground in January and um, you know, raised a lot of money. We raised over a million dollars to put this on. And you know, the nice thing about nonprofits is, you know, I don't people focus on the non part. <laughs> to me, it's 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 about it's more than profit. You it know, is. and it's about you know the mission. And, that's right. You know, so there's something really inspiring when you're able to like you know give to something that's going to benefit the community. And you know, we we're lucky as you know Poavik because we have this strong earned revenue stream. So you know, the pottery that we make and sell that represents, you know, two thirds of our revenue comes from the artwork that we make. And, you know, it's art that, that touches people. So they come in and, you know, they leave with, you know, either, you know, it could be a, a mug or something that put in their wall. But but also, you know, the these major installations that we do all over the city that, you know, like inspire people as they go around. Well, I will tell you, not only um, all of the important points that you've made already, but the part about children is really important to us at the community house, and I know it's important to you. The hands-on aspect of it for kids, that's mm -hmm. really something that, I don't want to say it's a lost art or a dying art, but certainly can, um, I think, be something that we can continue to grow and to reintroduce to our children. And you guys agree. You, you guys put a lot of emphasis we do. on that. We, we, we do a lot with uh, kids, but you know we also do a lot with adults, too, because sure. we just think creativity is like, you know, and, essential part of being human. I mean, Life. you have to link yeah. to it. And so, you know, one of the things that we do for, for decades, we've actually worked in, you know, the school systems, we've done programs and, you know, community centers and things. But um, the last couple of years, we've really, you know, started to like put some additional focus right in our own neighborhood. And um, we partnered with Hans Foundation last year and launched a program where we have a full-time uh, teacher that is a Pulavik staff member teaching art full-time in Hutchinson Elementary Middle School, right? You know, walking distance from the pottery. Um, this is a school that, you know, had no art programming in the school because, you know, they'd cut it out as being like, you know, budget, budget, I guess they thought it was not essential to the thing. Of course. But, you know, bringing it in, and all of a sudden, you know, the principal of the school has said, you know, that's raised everybody's, like, scores 140%. Just having, like, this, you know, ability to just be a little bit more creative. And, uh, you know, we have gone through, we've got some other schools that we're trying, we're starting to get into. We're partnering with some other organizations for funding. And, you know, it brings a whole d additional element to the schools. And I like to think, you know, one of the things about art, and I like to borrow a term from, there's a, a professor at Notre Dame, uh, John Paul Lederach, who's a, he's coined a term called critical yeast. That, and he works, um, he's a professor of international peace building, and he uses it for social change. And he says that, you know, a lot of people think about critical mass, that you get change when there's enough people with the same kind of ideas. And, and he talks about, no, it's really about the critical yeast. It's about that, that component that, that really creates that catalyst for change. And I think art does that. And, you know, I think it, it does it in a big way for the city. And I think Detroit recognizes that more than almost any other city. And we've got, you know, incredibly philanthropic organizations like Knight Foundation and Kresge and Herb that have invested millions of dollars because they know that art can make things happen and they can bring people in. You know, it, it, it's, it's amazing. You know, I could talk to you uh, for an hour. Uh, I would like to have you come on back on the show, mm -hmm. Steve, and uh, maybe even bring some of uh, the great products that uh, you guys are responsible for. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but I think it's a good moment to let our viewers know you'll be at the Community House on uh, June 20th, and you'll be speaking 6.30, part of the Culture Talk series. Uh, we have two more left to go. If folks want to come see you, they can 
go on our website at thecommunityhouse.com uh, or they can also call the community house or get a hold of you over at, at your great organization. One more time, your email address or your website address? Um, the website is www.pawabic.org. So okay. Pawabic.org. Um, you can email me at smcbride at pawabic.org. Well, uh, you're doing fantastic work. It's very kind of you to cut your time out uh, out of your busy schedule to be here today. Folks, go on down, support this fine institution organization. There's a retail component, educational component. You're doing very, very great work. Thank you for being on the show. Folks, unfortunately, we're out of time today. Um, I'll see you next time. I'm making a difference at the Community House. Uh, thank you so much. I'm Bill Seckler, President and CEO. And again, thank you so much, Steve, for being here today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you.